In this tutorial, we're going to take information that has been stored in a SQLite database and using Corona SDK, import that into a picker wheel that can then be used in a number of different types of apps. I talk about this process a little bit in the textbooks, beginning mobile app development with Corona SDK and learning mobile application and game development with Corona, but I hadn't created a full demonstration of the process of taking information from a SQLite database into a picker wheel. This last semester I had a group of students that were working on a project and so I created this specific demo for them. Get started with our project we need to make sure that we have our SQLite database. In this particular case I'm using a zip code database that I created for the textbook as you can see, it has the zip code, the city, and the state fields listing every zip code, city, and state in the United States. And then we're going to output that information to a picker wheel that allows us to select a specific city and state and then show that information by clicking on the values. So let's get started in creating our code. Using a build settings that just has a orientation setting to default to the portrait setting and a config.lua that sets the default width and height to 640 by 960. We'll use a letterbox scaling and basic settings of X align and Y align of centered with a frames per second set at 30. Pretty much default for using a project like this. Back in main Lua, let's go ahead and get started by doing our needed requires. We need to require SQLite and we also will need our widget tool for the picker wheel. That also allows us to use pre-built buttons, tabs, whatever you particularly want to use inside your application. Once we've got these requires set up, the first thing that I always do is make sure that the database is stored in the documents directory instead of the resource directory. If you package a database in the application, it is by default in the resource directory. Unfortunately, accessing a database when the application is running could betray the application as a potential virus. So it's whenever we're working with a database it needs to be in either the temps directory or the documents directory. Let's make sure that that database is copied over to the documents directory. To begin with we'll set our path to the system path for the file. Uh, my, the name of my database is, is zip.sqlite and we're checking to see if it already exists in the documents directory. So we'll try to perform a file IO open following the path in the documents directory and just simply try and do a read. If a file is not found, i.e. the file is equal to nil, then we need to copy it from the system resource directory to the system documents directory. Once we've got the path to where it should be located in the resource folder, and I'm going to assume that it is there as part of the application rather than doing a check, we need to open the file up using our IO open again. In this case, we're going to do a read binary to make sure that it works correctly. I'll explain why in just a second. And then we're going to go ahead and set this as the content source. Following that, we need to set up our write folder to the documents directory. So we'll set our file destination for the path destination and we'll tell it to write as a binary. Now, the reason why we include the binary switch as part of this is that when working with a Windows system, the write must be done as a binary. Uh, when using Corona SDK on a Mac for your development system, you can go ahead and just do a, do a read or a write. But when you are working with a PC or Windows based system for your Corona development, you must do a binary write if you are hoping to be able to open it and use it on any other development system. For best cross platform performance, make sure that you're doing a read binary and a write binary, i.e. RB and WB for your read and write of your information of a database when you're passing it from one folder to another folder on the mobile device. So once we have that file open, we can begin writing it. And remember our content source here, we're telling it to read everything with the star A. So read all the file information in and then write it all to the file destination in documents directory. So now that we have copied everything over, we're now ready to close the file. 
Remember, a close is necessary for in this particular case. Well, a close is always a good idea. A close is essential because if we don't close it, we're not sure that everything has been written. This forces the cache to flush and write everything to that destination file to make sure that the database has been copied. So now that we've got everything copied over, let's reopen our file, which should now be in the right location. And we're ready to then make sure that we handle any accidental or on purpose exits by our user so that the database is properly closed and doesn't become corrupted if they should exit the application without the database being closed. It's, I haven't seen any problems with this, but let's be sure. So we'll always do a database close if the app is closed by the user. Now it's time to get busy on creating the picker wheel. To do this, the first th step is to create a table. Remember, a table in Corona is done with two curly brackets. A table can be used to hold all kinds of great things, and it makes sense to do it as a table. Well, actually, a table is required when working with a picker wheel, so we need to store that data as the, the information from the database as a table. Next thing we need to do is set up our SQL statement and that is to read the information from the database. I'm going to limit the information that's coming from the zip code table in zip.sqlite to the first 20 records. Just for sake of easiness, um, there's actually thousands of records in this database. I, the first 20 will tell us that it's working. Now that we have our SQL statement, we're going to just pull rows of data in, doing a call to uh, DB in rows, passing it the SQL statement, and tell it to do a for loop, which is just going to simply take each row's information, specifically the city and the state. I'm just doing a little bit of concatenation here, so we're going to take, a, take the information from row, uh, specifically the city field, concatenate it with a comma, space, concatenated with the state information. So this will give us the city and state of each row of data that is loaded in from the database. And then we'll take that information and insert it into our data table. So all the data will be pulled into one table for everything, one table to rule them all. The next step is to form a, another table. This is going to be a table. This is a two-dimensional table. We're going to have a table within a table, and the table is going to store just one column of information. If we wanted additional columns of information, we could put a comma right here and additional table data to store second or third tables of information. In this case, we're just going to do, go with a single column. So we're going to align it left. We're going to have the selected object or the selected row to be the third one and pass it the data table as our labels. The align, start index, and labels are reserved words. You've got to use those and assign it to the appropriate information uh, that's needed for your application. Okay, so we've got our everything assigned to the picker wheel, but we do still need to create the picker wheel itself. Um, the column data right now is just simply a table storing the information that will become part of the picker wheel. So let's go ahead and create the picker wheel. The picker wheel is just simply going to make a call to widget.newPickerWheel, passing it parentheses and the start of a table, and then we need to pass it the parameters of that picker wheel. So I'm going to pass it, telling it that I want the top of the picker wheel to start 258 pixels down from the top. The font size is going to be 18. We'll set the font color to black, the font color selected, i.e. the third object or the whatever's in the selection criteria is going to be red, and then the column color itself is going to be uh, light gray. And then finally we need to assign the column data from the column data. So the columns is going to be set equal to column data, and again, however many columns we're going to have in here, you could have a comma and then as many columns as you needed, but each column is going to be its own table assigning to its own data. And then we'll close the picker wheel. Just a little bit left to do. We do want some methodology of getting the information back out of the picker wheel. So I'm going to create a function called show values. The values is going to call upon the picker using the get values function that is a part of the picker 
widget and then whatever is stored in values can be printed. In this particular case, I'm just going to print that data that comes back from it and just put it in our console. Uh, since I'm using Sublime Text with the Corona Editor Edition, that means it'll show down here in the console area at the bottom. Okay, almost done. I'm going to set up a widget button, which is just going to be the text word values go. Uh, it'll be left 10 from the left side 10 pixels out. The top will be 150 pixels down. It'll have a width of 298 by 56. The label will be the word values to show on the screen. And when it is released, it will call the show values function that we specified above. Just one last function or one last statement to add to our program before we're ready to run. And that is a runtime at event listener. This is a system event, and on system event, it will automatically call our on system event if the application is exiting to do a database close. Again, that's just to make sure if the user closes the application, it will close the database. So we'll save our application and run through run the project in Corona Editor, and here we have it running. Uh, and it looks like I need to clean up my database a little bit. It's showing the city and state as the first object in this instead of as the field names. Um, so we can clean that. So the third object down is currently New Hampshire, Portsmouth, uh, New Hampshire, and we can scroll down. And again, this is from a zip code list, so we do have some repetition since some cities do have more than one zip code. If I were to select, oh, let's go down to Holtzville, New York, and there you can see the column information displayed is Holtzville, New York. And there we have a simple PIP picker wheel project. You can view this and other tutorials on burtonsmediagroup.com forward slash blog. I've got all of the script here available for your review. You can see all of it. I'll include the link in the video description. Also make sure you check out some of our other tutorials. We've got the how to use tables tutorial on the Lua scripting language as well as our great textbooks on learning how to use Corona SDK.